Clanton from Shea Stadium and the Mets against the Houston Astros. For the Mets, the leadoff batter will be Lute Barnes playing second base, batting second, playing third base, Wayne Garrett, batting third to center fielder Willie Mays, batting fourth, playing right field, Tommy Agee, batting fifth, the catcher, Duffy Dyer, batting sixth and playing left field, John Milner, batting seventh at first base, Jim Beecham, batting eighth and playing shortstop, Ted Martinez, and the pitcher, John Matlack, batting ninth. Tonight's game, we'll see Tom Seaver in the mound. He has a record of 14-9. He'll be opposed by Dave Roberts. And then the final game of the home stand Wednesday afternoon, it'll be Jerry Kuzman pitching against Larry Durker. The Mets do have one other ball game, and it's a big one. The Mets and the Yankees at Yankee Stadium in the annual Mayor Trophy game. That will be Thursday night, game time at 7.30. Tickets for the game can be purchased at the same season prices at any of the Mets or Yankees. Thursday night at Yankee Stadium. Mets then go on the road, returning home on Labor Day. They'll be playing a doubleheader on Labor Day, September 4th, with the Chicago Cubs. They'll play the Cubs, Montreal, and St. Louis in the next homestand starting on September 4th. All the Mets now with a record of 59 and 33. They are 12 games back of the Pittsburgh Pirates, or one percentage point ahead of the Chicago Cubs. And the Mets now battling the Cubs as they have moved up into contention. Both teams 12 games back at the Pittsburgh Pirates. And right here now for the play-by-play, -play, Bob Murphy. All right, Ralph, Roger Metzger. The Houston shortstop, a switch hitter, will bat right-handed against John Matlack. Matlack has started twice against the Astros this year. Pitched well in both games, but lost in both games. The tall left-hander winds. Here's the pitch. Is taken low, ball one. Defensively, the New York Mets have Jim Beecham at first, Lute Barnes at second. Ted Martinez is short, and Wayne Garrett is playing third. John Milner in left field, Willie Mays in center. Tommy Agee is around and right. The catcher is Duffy Dyer, and on the mound, John Matlack. And the pitch is low, ball two, two balls and no strikes. Of encouragement to the New York Mets today, Rusty Staub was in the batting gate. Had his first lengthy workout inside the cage. Batted for about 25 minutes. Naturally, it is tender, sore, and still hurts, but it's encouraging. High ball three. Three balls and no strikes. Matlack getting behind on Roger Metzger, 3-0. Matlack has won 10 and lost 7. John has lost his last two. His ERA is excellent. One of the best in the National League, 2.2. The 3-0 delivery, way inside, ball four. And he walks Metzger on four pitches. And this will bring up the young man who's just about the toast of the National League this season, Cesar Sabino. He's only 21 years old. He is leading the National League and the majors in batting, hitting three of 45. Leads the National League in doubles with 28. He's second in the league in triples. He has seven. He's third in the league in runs scored, 87. And on top of that, he has stolen 45 bases. He's 21 years old. Inside and low, it gets away from Dyer, and Metzger goes to second. And Matlack starting off without his control here this evening. A wild pitch by John Matlack. Cesar Cedeno wins the batting title. He will be the youngest player in Major League history to do so. About two months younger than Al Kalin. Kalin was born in December, and Cedeno in February. Matt Lack with a runner on second. Nobody out. Cedeno, right hand hitter waiting. And a high hop fly into shallow right center. Running hard is Willie Mays. A.G. coming in. A.G. drops the ball after he had it. He's gloved. All hands are safe and moving to third is Metzger. Now the ball gets loose and now Cedeno goes to second base. Tommy A.G. after a long run had the ball in his glove but he dropped it. Metzger raced to third and the throw to third base was wide and got loose. And Cedeno took an extra base throw. 
pitch by Madlack. Breaking ball and swung on in. No strike two. Runners on second and third and nobody out. Jimmy Wynn batting 296. 20 home runs and 70 runs batted in. Pitch to the right-hand batter is inside. One ball and two strikes. This Houston ball club scores a lot of runs. They have scored more runs than any team in the major leagues. They are second in the National League to the Giants in home runs. As a team, their batting average is 260. Foul back. One ball, two strikes. The Houston Astros have five men with 60 or more runs batted in. Cesar Cedeno has 61 RBIs, and he's number five on the Houston team. Lee May is the leader with 77. Doug Rader, 73. Bob Watson and Jimmy Wynn each have 70. And a fly ball popped in the air to short right field. Barnes backpedaling out, makes the catch, tagged up and heading home as Metzger. The throw, they may get him. He's out. against Lee May, who has an awful lot of power. Now the pitch. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Oh, what a job. Runners were on second and third. Nobody out. And Matlack works his way out of it. Side retire. No runs. No hits. There were two errors and one left on. In the middle of the first inning, the Astros nothing. The Mets are coming to bat. Luke Barnes will lead off against Jerry Royce. Luke turned in an outstanding play when he New York Mets in the top half of the first inning. The Astros have Lee May at first, Tommy Helms playing second, Roger Metzger is short, and Doug Rader is playing third. Jesus Alou in left field, Cesar Cedeno in center, and Jimmy Wynn around and right. The catcher is Larry Howard. The pitch by Jerry Royce, a fastball, strike one call. Jerry Royce, the former Cardinal, has won eight and lost ten. 
5-10 against New York. Two wins and four losses. And the pitch on the way. Inside and low to Lute Barnes. One ball, one strike. This season, Jerry Royce has beaten the Mets twice and lost once. The Mets and the Astros have played six games to date, with Houston winning four of the six. Fastball high is two and one. Royce is a six foot five inch left hander who really throws hard. Just 23 years old, from St. Louis, Missouri. He came to the Astros for Scipio Spinks and Lance Clemens. Missed the inside corner, three and one. Scipio Spinks was doing an excellent job for the St. Louis Cardinals until he was injured and wiped out for the rest of the year. Three balls, one strength to Lute Barnes. Lute hitting at 333 on seven hits and 21 at-bats. Right-hand batter. The 3-1 pitch and a line drive into short left field coming in quickly. Jesus Salou, and he makes the catch. Line drive stayed up just long enough for Jesus. One out and the base is clear. The hitter is Wayne Garrett. Wayne hitting at 212 with two home runs, 18 runs batted in. Pitch by Jerry Royce, breaking ball in the dirt. One ball, no strikes. Eddie Yost coaching at third and Sheriff Robinson coaching at first. Deck batter is Willie Mays. Breaking ball on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. The Mets need a win tonight because they have not lost four in a row all year long. Nine times they've lost three in a row. That is five ball two, two and one. But if they lose here this evening, it will be four straight. up in the 2-1 pitch by Jerry Royce. He pops that fastball high and tank 3-1. and one. The 3-1 delivery. Too high, ball 4. It brings up Willie Mays with Garrett on first.
Astros starting the night six and a half behind Cincinnati. And a fastball over strength three call. Tommy Yeezy called out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left. At the end of one inning, the Astros nothing, the Mets nothing. The last time that Steve Calvin pitched in Philadelphia, he was going for his 20th win. A crowd of 53,000 that turned out. in a row. Tonight, Steve Carlton is trying to make it 16 straight and capture his 21st victory. Atlanta nothing, Philadelphia nothing at the end of two innings. Doug Rader faces John Madlack as we go now to the second and the pitch is outside ball one. Doug Rader is hitting 241, but it's a big 241. 18 home runs and 73 runs batted in. in with a pitch, swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Carlton's opponent tonight in Philadelphia is knuckleballer Phil Necro. Cincinnati playing at Montreal, a home run in the first inning by Joe Morgan. Reds lead 1-0 after the top of the first. And a bloop foul going over into the crowd, no play. For Cincinnati, Jim McLaughlin is pitching and for Montreal, Big Mike Torres. On the coast tonight, the Cubs play the Padres in San Diego. Chicago now just one percentage point behind the Mets. And St. Louis will play the Dodgers in Los Angeles. The Pirates and Giants are not scheduled. Fouled as he was jammed by Matt Lack, one ball and two strikes. In the American League, the Yankees have the night off. Baltimore leading California 1-0 after three innings. Andy Messersmith pitching against 13-game winner Pat Dobson. Cleveland four, Minnesota one at the end of two. That's Jim Perry and Milt Wilcox. <laughs> Oakland will be at Detroit, Jeff Center against Woody Franklin. Pitching one and two, Raider hits a shot right up the middle for a clean base hit. First base of the game, a single to center by Doug Raider.
nobody on. And the 2-2 pitch to Tommy Helms. Hip foul off to the right. No play. In the first inning, the Astros had Roger Metzger thrown out at the plate. Pitching two and two. And a foul pop. No play. It'll be over in the field box crowd behind the right field line. Receiver faces Houston tomorrow night, and Jerry Kuzman pitches Wednesday afternoon. Thursday night at Yankee Stadium, game time 7.30, the annual Mayor's Trophy game, the Mets and the Yankees. Fouled again off to the right. And Tommy Holmes is giving John Matlack a lengthy workout. Houston Astros have played day in and day out with a set lineup. Got a soft line drive base hit going into right field. So Tommy Helms hangs in there and he comes up with a base hit. This will bring up Jesus Alou. Jesus has not been used a great deal this year. The Astros have gone with their set outfield. With Bob Watson, Cesar Sabino, and Jimmy Webb. You know, you have to stay healthy to be a pennant contender. The Astros have seven players who have played over 100 games this year. They just have not been hit by injuries. Bob Watson is out for a couple of days with a muscle pull. Watson has played 115 games. Most by any Met player this year has been 90 ball games. Foul tip. For the Mets, Rusty Stab has missed almost 60. Leon Jones has missed 40. Tommy Agee has missed over 30. The Astros, Metzger has played all 117. Cedeno, Wynn, May, Raider, Helms, and Watson have all played over 100. And a little squibbler down the first baseline. Matlack hurries to it, turns and throws, and it's in time for the out. Low throw, but Beecham got it. Moving to second on the play, Tommy Helms. Jesus Alou is out on a little squibbler down the first baseline. Brings up the catcher, Larry Howard. Larry Howard hitting a 221. Larry, a right hand batter out of Abilene, Texas. He stands 6'3 and weighs 200. Matt Lack pitching from the stretch. Here's the pitch. Side ball one. Larry Howard has hit one home run this year. That was right here at Shea Stadium off John Matlack. Tommy Helms leading off second base with two men down. The pitch by Matlack is over. A call strike gets one ball, one strike. top half of the second. Now the pitcher on the way. And a ground ball is slowly down to third. Wayne Garrett up with it. Guns it across to Beecham and the side is out. No runs, two hits. No errors and one left on. At the end of an inning and a half, the Astros nothing, the Mets nothing. Before Duffy Dyer leads off, we'll pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. You're listening to the voice of the Mets here in Saratoga Springs, New York, WKJFM, 102.3 on your FM dial. 25 and a half minutes before 9 o'clock. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kainer. The home second with no score, and Duffy Dyer will be the hitter against Jerry Royce. Duffy hitting at 242. He has already made two excellent defensive plays this ball game. In comes the pitch from Jerry Royce. It's swung on and missed strike one. John Milner is on deck and then Jim Beecham. Curve on the inside corner, strike two. Bud Harrelson, Jim Vergosi, Cleon Jones. 
still sidelined with injuries. Cleon tried to play yesterday. His back stiffened up. Off the outside corner, one ball, two strikes. Mets are hoping that by the end of the week, Bud Harrelson and Jim Fergosi can get back into action. And it's over at the knees, strike three call. Second strike out for Jerry Roy. Usually he stays a 
they're managing again a foul ball off the fastball and again Metzger keeps it down at three balls and two strikes Metzger batting 214 for the year he's had one home run driven in 25 runs and the 3-2 pitch fouled off once again again. It is a half swing strike three. This might have been high. Metzger started for it, tried to hold up, and went too far. So Matlock gets his third strikeout, his second in this inning, and it brings up Cesar Cedeno. Cedeno popped up the shallow right field his first time up, and A.G. dropped the ball. So he's 0 for 1. Batting at 3.45 for the year. And the first pitch. It is taken low, ball one. Daniel with 18 home runs, 61 runs batted in. He has 28 doubles. That leads the National League. He's second in triples with seven. Has 143 hits. Fourth in the National League or the major. Round ball to third base. Dug out by Garrett on a good play to his left. And a throw to first base retires to the Major League Lady Matter. And a one, two, three. the bottom half of the third. The Mets coming up and Ted Martinez to lead off. Ted batting for the first time has a 217 average, a right-hand batter. He'll be followed by John Matlack and then Luke Barnes. First three batters for Jerry Royce. And the first pitch is a fastball on outside ball one. Martinez deep going a bunt. The end of three and a half innings. Atlanta one, Philadelphia nothing. Next pitch is in for a call. Strike it's one and one. Again, Martinez in running position. Steve Carlton going for his 16th consecutive victory. And there's a swing and a foul ball. The ball fouled back against the backstop back of home plate. One and two. Carlton has a record of 20 wins and six losses. The record for consecutive victories in one season is 19, set by Rube Marquardt. won 26 games over a two-year period. There's a foul ball. Pitch foul down in the dirt. It's one and two. One season, 19 in a row. Elroy face won 17 in a row. There's a little looper in the center field. It'll be a base hit. Cedeno takes it on one hop and the Mets have their first hit of the ball game as Martinez hits a single to center. Now with a runner on first base and no one out, the batter will be John Matlack, and he's in a punting situation. Matlack has been up 55 times. He's had nine hits. He had the two and a half innings in Cincinnati, one Montreal, and I think McLaughlin going for the Reds. So is going for Montreal. Morgan a home run the first with no one on his 15th of the year. First pitch to Matlack is in for a call strike as he moved in the punting position. Grader, the third baseman, applying a lot of pressure. He's charging very strongly. He's an excellent fielder. Again, he's about 60 feet away before the pitch, and he moves on up. Matlack squares, takes outside. One ball, one strike. Lee May coming in from first, not coming in as strongly. So about the only choice Matlack has is to bunt the ball toward first base. Third base side taken away by Raider. One pitch, Matlack bunts it, but it's foul, and it's a one-two count. No score, no one out, bottom of the third. Raider again in, so they're expecting Matlack to punt again. He squares out. Here's the pitch. Runner goes. The ball taken high, and the throw down to second base is late, and Martinez steals second. shortstop Metzger it was a high throw and he had no chance at all as Martinez cop second base two ball 
two strike count. And again, Houston looking for a bunt. This time Lee May is in about 60 feet away from his first base position. Raider has to guard at third. Here's the pitch. It is taken in for a call. Strike three. And Matlack has called out on strike. John in bunting position and taking the pitch. Now with one out, the batter will be Luke Barnes. Line to left field on a 3 1 pitch his first time up. Average at 318, he's been up 22 times. Barnes came to the plate without his batting helmet, so he was sent back to get one. It's illegal to bat without the helmet. You can wear the helmet on the field defensively if you wish. You don't have to wear it, but you have to. It's mandatory, you have to wear it at the plate. Let's 
Metzger. Or Metzger took the throw, but Barnes, who had come to a sudden halt, scrambled back in his hands and knees to get back to the bag in time. It's Dean scored an error against Raider, and runners now at first and third, and the batter coming up is Tommy Agee. He was struck out on his first appearance on three pitches. First pitch to Agee, swung on and missed it, strike one. Agee hitting 248. Ten home runs, 38 runs batted in. Pitch back to Agee in the dirt, dug out by Howard, a good play there. And the runner's home. Cleveland has added another new. They lead Minnesota by a score of eight to three, getting two runs in the first, two runs in the second, two runs in the third, and two runs in the fourth. One and one, the count to Tommy Agee, Royce back. The pitch is sliced foul, the stands on the first base side. So the count goes to one ball and two strikes. At the end of four and a half innings, California one, Baltimore one. That's your Schmidt against Pat Dobson. Pitch to A.G., a curveball that breaks down. Mays goes to second base and draws no throw. On that pitch, Larry Howard was completely crossed up. He was looking for a fastball. It was a curveball. He barely got his glove on the ball and knocked it down. So Howard goes out to the mound. He wants to get the signal straight. When you throw as hard as Royce, you can be in trouble if those signals are mixed up. That is being scored a pass ball up on the pitch. Fast ball allowing Mays to go down to second. He was running with the pitch. Could have given him a stolen base. Here's the pitch to A.G. He's down in the right field corner. If it's fair, it'll be extra bases. It's foul. So a foul ball in the right field corner. Foul by several feet and A.G. back to the plate. second and third, a run in. There are two out in the bottom half of the third. Group foul is homeward for Baltimore. A man on, so they lead now by a score of three to one. There's a swing and a pitch way low in the dirt. And A.G. is struck out for the second time in the ball game. That retires the side. Mm-hmm. Leading one to nothing and Houston with Jim Wynn coming up. Wynn popped up to second base actually shallow right field his first time up and Roger Metzger tried to score from third and was thrown out the plate so he hit into a double play. There's a high pop up this time on the first base side. Beecham is under it. He makes the call and the catch. So John Madlack gets Jim Wynn out on the first pitch and brings up Lee May. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. You're listening to WKJFM 102.3 on your FM dial in Saratoga Springs, New York. The time, two minutes before 9 o'clock. Wow, well, Kiner here with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson. The first pitch to Lee May hit down in the left field corner over to field the ball is John Milner in foul territory. And he comes up with the ball and throws it in the third base as May goes in with a double. Lee May coming up with a two-base hit after striking out his first time up. May hitting at 287. That puts a runner in scoring position. The Mets lead one and up. Second on the club in RBIs to Lee May, who has 77. Raider batting at 242, but a strong 242 with 18 home runs, four triples, 19 doubles, and 73 RBIs. Pitch back. It is inside and low. One ball, one strike. Madlock's next delivery. It is hit in the air to shallow right field. Going back is Barnes. Also coming in is A.G. A.G. runs him off and makes the catch. And he gets a big hand for the catch, which is a routine fly ball because he
he dropped one earlier in the ball game. So now two men away, Lee May stays at second base and the batter's Tommy Helms, who singled the right field his first time up. Helms batting 268. Leading one to nothing, Houston with a runner at second base. Two men away, we're in the top of the fourth inning. And Madlack's first pitch to Helms, hit in the air to center. Mays back, he has a lot of room. Turns and makes the catch, and the side is retired. In the inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, and the man left at second in the score. At the end of three and a half innings. have had a strong bullpen all year featuring Tug McGraw and also along with Tug Danny Priscilla. They will join me and a number of other big league stars aboard the Long Island Railroad's bullpen special on Thursday, August 24th. There will be 40-minute stopover parties at Huntington, Hicksville, Mineola, and Jamaica. Check arrival times at those stations. The parties will feature baseball instruction, discussion, and prizes at each stop. With instant winners will be welcomed aboard the train and will travel with the players to Yankee Stadium for the Mayor's Trophy game that evening. Don't miss the fun. That's Thursday, August 24th. We're going now to the bottom of the fourth inning. For the Mets, it'll be Duffy Dyer to lead off against Jerry Royce. The Mets have one run on two hits. The Astros have no runs and three off John Matlack. Duffy struck out his first time up. He got caught looking at a fastball. Average of 241 for the year. First pitch, a curveball, highest ball one. Dyer now has caught more ball games than Jerry Grody. This is his 62nd. Grody was in 58. One open. Get in the air to the shortstop. On the dirt part of the infield, and Metzger backpedals at the last minute and makes the catch. Ball was up there. But one pitch and one away. And it brings up John Miller. He popped up the short his first time up. Miller hitting 253. He has 10 home runs, 25 RBIs. Left hand batter. And he's in his rookie year. And the first pitch is grounded out to second. Helms comes in, gets a good hop, throws the first two pitches, two men away. That'll bring up Jim Beecham. Jim was out on a fantastic catch by the center fielder, Sedeno, his first time up. Sedeno going high to the top of the wall at the 396 mark to take an extra base hit away. And this is Jim Beecham's 33rd birthday today, and that's no way to treat a fellow on his birthday. Royce and Beecham were teammates last year with the Cardinals. First pitch a curve. It's ball one. delivery. Swung on and missed. A fastball actually fouled. That's one ball and one strike. Houston has drawn well at home this year with their ball club in contention for the Western Division. They have drawn 1,227,377 in 55 dates. There's a change up topped out in front of the plate. Picked up by the catcher, Larry Howard. He tosses the first base to May and the side is retired. Jerry Royce retiring the Mets on five pitches. And the score at the end of four innings of play. The Mets won, the Astros nothing. In the fifth inning here at Shea Stadium, Jesus Alou. The left fielder will be leading off. Jesus bounced back to Matlack his first time at bat third of the order to hit against Matlack in the top of the fifth inning. The Mets in front, one nothing. And the pitch by Matlack is inside and low, ball one. This is the opening game of a three-game series. 
The 1-0 delivery fouled straight back against the backstop. One ball and one strike to Jesus Alou. Last year, Jesus hit 279. Two young left-handers hooked up here tonight at Shea Stadium. The 1-1 pitch by Matt Lack. Foul ball in the dirty one after a curveball. It's one ball, two strikes. That's playing the infield and the outfield straight away against the right-hand batter. On deck, Larry Howard and then Jerry Royce. Down comes the pitch. Grounder hit hard. And a foul ball. Foul ball just outside third base. Winds up down in the left field corner. Sir Salou coming back, looking down toward third where he just missed an extra base hit. The Houston Astros with a team batting average of 260. And they have scored more runs than any team in the major leagues this season. Matt Lack getting his sign from Dyer. The one-two pitch. Changeup is popped up foul down the right field line. No play for Jim Beecham. Ball goes into the crowd. On their road swing, the Mets will start out with a weekend series in Atlanta. Then go into Cincinnati for three night games and on to Houston for a weekend series. Returning to New York for the September 4th. Labor Day doubleheader against Chicago. The one-two pitch, and a soft line drive into short left field for a base hit. Alou lunged at the pitch, got the bat on it, and dropped it into short left. Third time in five innings, the Astros have had their leadoff batter on base. So the game certainly has not been easy to this point for John Matlock. Larry Howard was thrown out by Wayne Garrett his previous time at bat. The pitcher, Jerry Royce, do up next. The Mets are not looking for any butt. The pitch by Matt Lack on the outside corner calls strike one. Lute Barnes and Teddy Martinez a double plate up and a foul ball back. The count strike two on Larry Howard. Larry Howard, a right hand batter. Oklahoma City last year in the American Association. The Astros carry three catchers. The veteran John Edwards and his backup men Bob Stinson and Larry Howard. Here's the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. He got him. Good fastball by Matlack. For John Matlack, strikeout number four. be a tough way to lose a winning streak if you lost it 1-0. Well, in Philadelphia, the Atlanta Braves lead the Phillies 1-0 at the end of six. Steve Carlton trying for his 16th straight win. He's up against Phil Necro. Now Jerry Royce up and the Mets look for a butt. He squares around and takes high and tight. One ball, no strikes. Cincinnati leading Montreal 1-0 after four innings on a home run by Joe Morgan. The Cubs play at San Diego, the Cardinals at Los Angeles. The Pirates and Giants get a day off. Hook Powell hit a two-run homer to get the Orioles back in front of California. It's 3-1 at the end of five and a half. Cleveland leading Minnesota 8-3 after four and a half innings. Oakland three, Detroit nothing at the end of two. He punts the ball, pops it foul, no play. Back over the screen into the crowd. Oakland three, Detroit nothing at the end of two. Well, the Tigers won a wild one yesterday. California had a nine-run inning and did not win. Detroit fell behind nine to four, rallied and pulled the ball game out. First, not in time. Jesus Salou on first base with one out. Now the 
Boston pitcher Jerry Royce is up trying to sacrifice. Garrett coming in close at third. He d- does an offer, and the pitch is over a call strike. It's one ball and two strikes to Jerry Royce. So now Royce has a good hard look at Salty Parker to see if the punt is still on. Knowing that if he punts foul, he'll strike out. Left-hander against left-hander. And the pitch on the way. He turns to bunt straight three. Didn't get the bat on it. Fifth strikeout for John Madlack, and it brings up leadoff batter Roger Metzger. Metzger has played in every Astro ball game this year. toward the middle, Martinez to his left, grabs it, steps on second, forcing out Jesus Alou, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. So we've come halfway at the end of four and a half innings. The New York Mets won, the Houston Astros nothing. Martinez has scored the only run of the game. He singled to center in the third, and he stole second. And he came home on a base hit by Luke Barnes. He takes strike one called on the inside corner. John Matlack will bat next to then Luke Barnes. The Astros have out hit the Mets 4-2. to two. And a curve is fouled against the shin guard of Larry Howard. We have a two-strike count on Ted Martinez. Teddy batting 220. 13 runs batted in. Jerry Royce from St. Louis, Missouri on the mound for Houston. His two-strike pitch, fastball inside, one ball, two strikes. Royce has had good control tonight. He's walked only one, struck out four. Pitching one and two. Inside, it's two and two. Royce has had a number of games this year that have been difficult for him because he did not have his control. Nobody out, last half of the fifth. Had a swing and a miss, he got him with a fastball. Both left-handers have hung up five strikeouts. Now John Matlack comes to bat. Matlack getting a nice hand from the Shea Stadium crowd. John was struck out his first time at bat. And the pitch to him is inside ball one. Lute Barnes, who leads off, is out on deck. The 1 0 delivery is on the outside corner. The Nets have had two long drives caught in this game, both by Cedeno, the fleet footed center fielder, to race to the fence. And a fastball that swung and missed, one and two. Delivery by Jerry Royce, a little bit high, two balls and two strikes. Now Royce has his sign, and the pitch on the way is swung on and missed. Strike three. Strike out number six for the left hander who throws hard. Two outs and nobody on. Now the top of the batting order for Luke Barnes. Had a busy hand in this ball game. In addition to driving in the only run of the game, he helped the Mets tremendously in the first inning when he went into right field, caught a pop fly, and made a good throw home to get Mesker for a double play. He runs up, tries to bunny his way on, but bunts the ball foul. been playing him even with the bag and wide at the line. Had a curveball over, strike two. Raider is an outstanding 
defensive ball player as well as an excellent long ball hitter. He has won the gold glove five times. The two-strike pitch. Fly ball into the air to right field. Should be easy for Jimmy Wynn, who eases over and makes the catch. The Mets go one, two, three in their half of the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. At the end of five innings, the New York Mets won. The Houston Astros nothing. He must pitch to Cesar Cedeno, Jimmy Wynn, and Lee May in the second. Cedeno leads the circuit in batting, hitting a 344. He has reached safely on an error and bounced to third, nothing for two. And a long fly ball hit deep to left center field, way back. And there it goes, a home run. Cedeno's 19th home run of the year. Fly ball to the center field fence, 410 feet out of the first inning. Caught by 
Cedeno. And he reached safely on an error in the third inning when the Mets scored their run. The wind up by Royce. Here's the pitch. And a foul ball going out of play behind first base. Here's the answer to the baseball quiz. The last American League player to win back-to-back RBI titles was Roger Maris with the Yankees with 112 in 1960, 142 in 1961. Curve is low to Willie Mays. One ball, one strike. And a fly ball, well hit the right field. Back goes the right fielder, Jimmy Wynn at the fence. He makes the catch. Maybe a step in front of the fence. Wynn pulls in the drive by Willie Mays. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. You're listening to the voice of the Mets here in Saratoga Springs, New York, WKJFM 102.3 and your FM dial. The correct time now, 29 minutes past the hour of 9 o'clock Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Tommy Agee facing Jerry Royce and the pitch is high, ball one. They're in the last of the eighth inning in Philadelphia. Atlanta leading Philadelphia one to nothing. And a foul ball off. Bill Negro pitching against Steve Clowden has not lost a game since the 30th of May when Tommy Agee and Willie Mays had two-run homers to beat him. He has won 15 in a row. He's bidding for his 21st win. Hit hard to foul off to the right, no play. One ball, two strikes. Cincinnati leading Montreal 4 to nothing at the end of six. Baltimore 3, California 1 after six and a half innings. Cleveland nine, Minnesota three after five and a half. Too high to Tommy Agee, two balls and two strikes. And it's Oakland three, Detroit nothing after three and a half. Two outs, nobody on, the pitch to Agee. Line drive into the air to right field, Wynn cutting over, jumps up and makes the catch. Wynn had the ball slightly misjudged, corrected the mistake by leaping into the air Snagging the line drive. Let's hit the ball hard, but they go out in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. At the end of six innings, the Astros won and the Mets won. Here at Shea Stadium in New York, through six innings of play of the Houston Astros. One run, five hits, and one error. The New York Mets, one run, two hits, and two errors. Jarvis at the organ with the eyes of Texas as we prepare to go to the seventh inning. The paid attendance here tonight is 24,242 and the total attendance 25,080. So the New York Mets have now reached the total paid attendance for the season of 1,800,721. Tommy Helms is up to lead off here. Here's Matt Lack's pitch and it's low for a ball. Helms moving back on the pitch. Single and he fly to center, one for two. Hitting 267 for the year. Right hand batter. Matt likes a lefty, and the pitch is swung on foul back. It's out of play. So it's one and one. Hey, Sue Salou is on deck for the Houston Astros. Here's the one one delivery. A little low, two and one. Donatelli is the umpire behind the plate. Here's the 2 1. Swung on it on the ground. Cut off at third by Garrett and across to Beecham in time. One away. Hey, Sousa Lou. Grounded out and single. He had a leadoff single in the fifth inning, but died at first base. He moves up toward the plate. And here's the pitch. A little low for a ball. It's one and all. Madlock has struck out six, and he has walked one here tonight. Here's a 1 0 pitch. So on, Hammond on the ground is short. A big hop to Martinez. Across to Beecham in time, and he's out. Howard had grounded out and struck out. He's 0 for 2. Score tied here 1-1 with the Astros batting in the top of the seventh inning. The Mets got a run in the third. The Astros got one in the sixth. Here's a pitch high and away and it's ball one. The Astros and Mets will be here again tomorrow night. The 
again on Wednesday afternoon. The Mayor's Trophy game is at Yankee Stadium on Thursday night. The Mets and the Yankees. Foul back and out of play. Rodney Richard is up and throwing now in the bullpen for the Houston Astros. Here's a 1-1 one, one pitch. It's a little low. It goes to 2-1. James Rodney Richard is up and throwing. Jerry Roy is scheduled to bat next. There are two men out. There's nobody on base. This pitch is fouled back off the screen and out of play. The count is even now at 2-2. Two and two. Pittsburgh Pirates schedule. Chicago Cubs play the San Diego Padres later tonight on the West Coast. Matt Lack with a 2-2 pitch now. Swung on and hit deep to right, but moving on back is A.G. a step or two, waiting now to make the catch. And the side is out in order. Nothing across. And in the middle of the seventh inning, the score is tied. The Astros won, the Mets won. The Cleveland Indians have scored in every inning as they go to the seventh against the Minnesota Twins. It is Cleveland 10, Minnesota 3. John Broheimer, Glenn Borgman, Buddy Bell, Alex Johnson, Greg Nettles have had home runs. Jim Perry started for Minnesota. Jim Strickland in the third, LaRoche in the sixth. Milt Wilcox started for Cleveland, Ray Lamb in the sixth inning. At the end of four, it's Oakland 3, Detroit nothing. Catfish Hunter against Woody Fryman. Right here, Duffy Dyer is up to lead off for the Mets in the bottom of the seventh inning. He has struck out and popped out so far. Jerry Royce has been in all the way. That pitch is in for a call strike. James Rodney Richards still throwing in the bullpen for the Houston Astros. Dyer, Milner, and Beecham scheduled to bat in this inning for the Mets. Here's a swing and a drive to the left. It's way back towards the track and going back to the wall is a Lou and he makes the catch. Just in front of the 371 side. The warning track and one hand at the ball just in front of the 371 sign in left field. John Miller has popped out and grounded out. Here tonight, the New York Mets have had warning track power. They've hit them long, but not long enough. Here's the pitch to Miller, and it is in there for a call strike at the knee. Phillies did not score in the eighth. Well, they did score. I beg your pardon. You're just bringing a foul ball off and out of play. The Phillies did score in the eighth. And so, going to the ninth inning now, it's the Atlanta Braves one and the Philadelphia Phillies one. Bill Necro against Steve Carlton. Carlton going for his 16th consecutive win. All right. Fouled off and out of play. Two strikes to John Miller. Mets 
got a run on a hit. The homer by Beecham. No errors, none left. The end of seven innings to play. The score is the Mets two and the Astros one. Bob Watson is coming up now. To bat for Jerry Royce. As manager Harry Walker goes to his bench. Watson batting for Royce. The season's batting average of 307. He has 11 home runs and 70 runs batted in. Bob Watson, the right hand batter, being put up here, and James Rodney Richards still throwing down there in the bullpen. The Mets have had only three hits. The Astros have had five, but the Mets are leading by a score of two to one, with Houston coming up in the top of the eighth inning. Swing and a miss at strike one. Madlack has struck out six and walked one here tonight. The Atlanta Braves did not score in the top of the ninth. The Phillies are coming up in the bottom of the ninth inning with the score tied. Atlanta won, the Phillies won. That's in for a call strike. 0-2. Oh Cincinnati Reds are leading Montreal 4-0 in the top of the eighth. It's a swing and a miss. Struck him out on three pitches. Matt Black got the pitch hitter. Bob Watson for the seventh strikeout victim. That's Roger Metzger. Walked, struck out, grounded into a force play. Jim Ray has joined James Rodney Richard in the bullpen now for the Astros. Jim Ray is also up and throwing. It's to Metzger. A little high for a ball. is low for a ball. It's 2-0. Oh. One man out. Nobody on base. Duffy Dyer sends out the sign and here is the 2-0 oh delivery. Taken low. He was taking that pitch regardless. It's 3-0. and oh. down the pipe. It's three and one. Let's get turned to look at sign man Salty Parker, the coach at third now. See if he's turned loose on the three one. Cesar Cedeno is on deck. Three one pitch. He's taking and he walked. That's the second walk issued by Madlock. He walked Metzger in the first inning. So the tying run is on at first with one man out and Cesar Cedeno is coming up. He homered for Houston in the sixth inning. He's one for three here tonight. Is up and throwing in the Met bullpen. Chuck McGraw is throwing. John Madlock sets up. Jack Smith's good. First base. Pitch is swung on it in the air. Deep to the left. Going way back to the wall now. It's Milne. It leaps up. Ball is off his glove. He's on the ground. Mays has the ball. That's just getting a green light at third. He comes on and he scores. And now holding at second. It's Cesar Cedeno. Tells him he's okay. May is going back to retrieve his own cap. So the score is tied 2 2. So Daniel belted that ball back near the wall. Milner went back, gave it a leap up into the air. The ball was off his glove. He crumpled in the track, and Mays retrieved the ball, but Salty Parker at third gave a green light to Metzger, figuring that he could beat Mays' arm to the plate, and he did. at second and it'll be Jim Wynn coming up the Mets two in Houston two Dyer is out there talking to Madlock Doug McGraw still throwing in the bullpen one man out Wynn is the number three man in the order coming up he's followed by Lee May Houston batting in the top of the eighth inning back behind the plate. Madlock standing there on the mound with his arms folded. Steps up on the rubber now to take the side. Cesar 
Cedeno is leading and it's going to be an intentional walk. Cedeno bluffed to start on the pitch outside. An intentional pass to win to set up the force and the double play possibility and then they'll work to Lee May. Outside is ball three now. So the intentional walk is accomplished. The Atlanta Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies are going to the 10th inning now. Still tied 1-1. Bill Necro against Steve Carlton making the bid to keep his winning streak alive. He's won 15 in a row. Up in Montreal, Cincinnati 4. Montreal nothing going now to the bottom of the 8th inning. The Astros have runners at first and second. There's one man out and Lee May is at the plate. Like pitch to the right hand batter, swung it on the ground, and it's taken by Garrett at third and on over to Barnes and on over to Fuchs for a double play. A 5 4 3 double play, and the side is retired. So it is one run on one hit, a walk and one man left, and in the middle of the eighth inning, the score is tied. Houston 2 and the Mets 2. New York Mets will send up John Madlock. He'll bat for himself, leading off here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Madlock's been up twice. He struck out both times. Blaze pitches foul back. It's strike one. The Astros have two runs, six hits. The Mets have two runs, three hits. Atlanta Braves 
Warriors didn't score in the top of the tenth. The Phillies are batting the bottom of the tenth. Score still tied. That's a breaking pitch high. It's ball one. Willie Mays is on deck now for the Mets. Score tied here, 2-2. Bottom of the eighth inning. It sails high and away. It's 2-0 to Wayne Garrett. Jim Owens, the pitching coach out of the dugout. Jim Owens, the pitching coach of the Astros, is on his way to the mound. He wants to know about this uh, control problem that Jim Ray seems to be having here at the outset. Owens is at the mound, not talking it over with Jim Ray. Dave Roberts will go for the Astros. Wednesday afternoon, Jerry Kuzman for the Mets. And Larry Durker for the Astros. Astros started the night six and one half games back of Cincinnati in the Western Division. They figure they're still very much in the race. And it's the first time since they were formed in 1962 that they have been in the race this close this time of year. This will be a 2 0 pitch now to Wayne Garrett. Swung on, hit on the ground, and it is smothered by Helms. He picks it up, throws, and in time, moving on to second is Matlack. Holmes was in a sitting position when he threw that ball on to Lee May. He had to smother it to keep it from going through, but now it's Matlack at second, and Willie Mays is coming up. Mays fly deep to center. to me. Swung on and missed. It was a breaking pitch. It's strike one. Willie ringing his right hand a little bit there after having taken a vicious cut. Madlock leads off the bag at second. Ray sets up. It's to me. Ball. 
Ben Beecham home it in the bottom of the seventh for the Mets. But they may hit again at two to one, but Houston scored in the eighth inning with Cedeno knocking in the tying run. Swinging a ground ball drilled through the hole in the left for a base hit. Picked up by John Milner and played back, and Tommy Helms is on at first with a Sioux Salu coming up. One for three, grounded out single and grounded out short to first. The Atlanta Braves and the Philadelphia Phillies are going to the 11th inning, still tied 1-1, and it's still Bill Necro, and it's still Steve Carlton. Cincinnati leading Montreal 4-0 with the Expos batting now in the bottom of the ninth inning. And Mike Jorgensen has just hit a home run for Montreal to make that a 4-1 ball game, nobody on base. In a foul ball, off and out of play. Strike one to Alou. That is the ninth homer of this year for Mike Jorgensen. Joe Morgan hit one for Cincinnati in the first inning. The Cubs in San Diego later. The Cards and the Dodgers later. The Pirates and the Giants are not scheduled. Matt Light checks the runner at first, and here's the pitch to Jesus. Alou popped up to the right side and foul territory. Jim Beecham is waiting, and he makes the catch. Foul out to first. Tommy Helms holds at first, and Larry Howard will be the batter. Rounded out, struck out, line to right. If you want to look ahead now to the bottom of the ninth inning, the Mets will be scheduled to send up Tommy Agee, Duffy Dyer, and John Milner. Bad luck. Throws to first, and Helms is back. Two runs, six hits. The Mets, two runs, three hits. Howard asked for the rosin bag. He got it. Tossed it right back over to the on-deck circle where Jim Ray is kneeling. That back again works off the stretch and here's the pitch. Swung on and hit in the air to center. Willie Mays is there. He's waiting and Mays makes the cut. Side is out. It's no runs a hit, no errors and one left. In the middle of the ninth inning, the score is still tied. The New York Mets will try to pull it out now in the bottom of the ninth inning with A.G. Dyer and Milner coming up to face right-hand pitcher Jim Ray. Call on that curveball from Donatelli, the umpire behind the plate. Takes a little breather 
now, turning his back to the plate. Takes off his cap. There's nobody on base. 2-2 delivery. Get on the ground to shortstop. Metzger over up with it. Ross to Lima and two men are out. Duffy Dyer grounding out short to first. Now John Mills. He's gone over three. He popped to short. He grounded out second to first and he flies to center. Miller's had 10 home runs. He's hitting 251. Yesterday, 
started out on about the same tone tonight. Roger Nutsko would walk on four pitches. And he would wild pitch to second base. Cesar Cedena popped the ball up into short right, and Tommy Agee dropped it and threw it away as it got by Martinez. He didn't throw it away. He got it to Martinez, but Martinez didn't handle it, and he was charged with an error. Double error charge on the ball, and quickly, Houston had runners at second and third, and nobody out. But Jim Wynn popped up in the short right. Lou Barnes went back and caught the ball. Metzger tagged and tried to score, and Barnes threw him out of the plate. So it was a double play, and Lee May struck out, so the Mets were out of the inning. The Mets then had that one nothing lead all the way up to the sixth, when Cesar Cedeno led off with a home run. It was then a 1-1 ball game. The New York Mets recaptured the lead in the bottom of the seventh when with two men out, Jim Beecham hit a home run into the bullpen. And Houston came right back, and they got a run in the eighth inning when Roger Metzger drew a walk. Cesar Cedeno double way back to the wall and left. John Milner went up. It was off his glove, but the double was enough to score Metzger, and it was a 2-2 ball game. It went that way to the bottom of the ninth when with two men out, Milner drew a walk, and Jim Beecham hit his second consecutive homer, and the New York Mets won it by a score of 4-2. to two. John Matlack posted his 11th victory. He has lost seven, and Jim Ray took the loss. We'll be back with more in just one minute. Uh, this is George Burns introducing the Navy three-year guarantee. It's for guys 17 or 18 years old who'd like a choice in deciding what kind of work they do and where they do it. Here's how the Navy three-year guarantee works. You can come in the Navy for three years and they'll guarantee you at least two things. The first, your choice of either the East Coast or the West Coast as a place to work out of. And second, your choice of sea duty, which means you'll be seeing a lot of the oceans of this world. Or work as an airman recruit, which means you'll be seeing a lot of airplanes. Maybe even be on an aircraft carrier. Now, where else could a guy your age get a deal like this? For only a three-year commitment. Certainly not in private industry. You know you should see your Navy man soon? He'll tell you if you qualify for the Navy three-year guarantee. You see, today's Navy helps you be what you want to be right now. To enlarge on the feet of 33-year-old Jim Beach and let us say that he first came to the Major League with the Cardinals in 1963, coming into tonight's game in 480 times at bat, coming out starting this year in the Major League, he had had only nine home runs. Jim Beecham has never hit over two home runs in any one Major League season. He hit two here tonight in the space of less than an hour. So the New York Mets have won their 60th game of this season. They have picked up a half game on the Pittsburgh Pirates who are not scheduled until they trail the Pittsburgh Pirates by 11 and one half games. In the season series, the Mets have won three, Houston have won four, if they drive the 24,242, here are the final totals. For the Mets, four runs on four hits and two errors, for Houston, two runs on seven hits and one error. That likes the winner, raise the loser. Again, the final score of the Mets, four and Houston, two.